All right, everyone, what is going on? I saw this article a while ago. It was about obesity in Mexico. First, I want to say that I have lived in Mexico myself and I've been there a couple times uh, very briefly in the last two years. But when I lived there for six months, I was teaching English. And from what I remember, there is a lot of junk food in Mexico. When I was walking the streets, there were food carts and food vendors everywhere. And I wasn't even in a big city. I was in a city that you have never even heard of in the middle of Mexico. Uh, it's in a state called Michoacan. And there's just, there's like chicharrones, which is like pork rinds. And then there's burritos and there's fruit carts if you want to eat something that's, you know, relatively light and healthy. But they also drink a lot of soda. There's soda everywhere. They're, on every corner, there's a little convenience store. I forget what they call them. They call them, not taquerias, that's kind of like the bars, but the, uh, I, I forget. But there's candy stores, and there's just all sorts of junk food everywhere. And it's not hard to find, and they drink it a lot. One of their former presidents was the president of Coca-Cola, in Mexico before he became president of Mexico, which tells you something about their love affair with uh, with soft drinks. They drink it more than we do, in fact. Per capita, they drink more liters of soda. So my point is obesity is rising everywhere. It's not just here. So you can't, you can't blame like a bunch of academics for the obesity crisis here. You can't blame the low-fat craze for obesity because the low-fat craze never hit Mexico. They never took a low-fat diet. The thing about Mexico is they eat a lot of everything. They eat a lot of meat. They eat a lot of um, saturated fat, a lot of starch, a lot of sugar. Just They just eat too much in general. Uh, it's a very fun culture. Don't get me wrong. I, I love living there. It's a, they're fun people, and they like to party, and they like to have a good time. Um, it is having an effect on their health. But this article is about NAFTA and the effect of free trade on their health. So here's this guy. Look at what he's got in his hand there. He's got half a liter of Pepsi <laughs> with, the, with the sombrero too. Not classic. This is a classic photo of Mexico too. you got these high sidewalks on the street. Uh, if you're handicapped in any way, Mexico is not a good place for you. Uh, it's really hard to get around if you're injured. I remember I had a bad knee and I hated walking on the sidewalks because they would just aggregate my knee. This article starts in uh, San Cristobal de las Casas. I don't actually know where that is. I'm not sure. There are a lot of places in Mexico I don't know. Uh, and it talks about the Ruiz family, and there's two sons in, the, in this family. And I think they talk about the... Oh, here it is here. So good, typical family here, um, enjoying a meal together. But I think one of the things, two things I notice here is um, just the quantity that they have. Um, it's just... It's, and I think that's a big problem there is that they just they eat a lot of everything. It's not just one food. I don't think you can blame it necessarily on the junk food or the churros or the desserts that they have. Speaking of sweets, they have candy score candy stores. They call them palaket palakarias. I, I I forget. Um, and they have pandarias, which are like the little bread stores, just everywhere. And it doesn't matter how poor the town is, they always have one. Uh, and there's this. There's this guy here, I forget which son that is, but he's pouring himself some Coca-Cola. I even worked in uh, a small Texas town on the border of Mexico, and the culture there is pretty much the same. Just every fast food restaurant you could possibly imagine, a lot of soda, a lot of sweets. I remember crossing the bridge going between Mexico and Texas, and there were little kids on the bridge selling sweets. It, it was this l big cake. It was like a bunch of coagulated nuts with caramel. It was so delicious. <laughs> Maybe too delicious. So I heard the all the Ruiz family um, having Chinese takeout. So Chinese takeout has taken hold in uh, in Mexico. You can, so if you go to Mexico, you now you can get Chinese food. I wonder if they have Panda Express there. I'm not, I'm not even sure. So they talk about free trade and how free trade made food a lot cheaper and a lot more accessible. And we kind of dumped all of our cheap exports on them, like corn and soybeans. Um, I don't know about wheat, probably too. It, it just became a lot cheaper. And I think that explains the obesity crisis a lot more than other things, like the low-fat epidemic of the 1970s and 80s. I mean, epidemic or maybe the the fad or whatever you want to call it as countries have access to more food they get fatter i mean we don't work in factories we don't work in the fields we, we're more sedentary and it just becomes easier to consume food like this so let's keep going here um yeah it, it 
a lot it's just about free trade and it's just like the promise and perils of free trade free trade is a good thing overall because it makes things cheaper and gives us more more choices and more options but it also brings a lot of ailments like obesity because food is so cheap and so tasty and we also have a lot more variety and one thing we know about variety um, is that the more variety of foods we have the more we're likely to uh, more the more we consume and the cheaper it is the more the more we consume speaking of which um, it talks about the the obesity epidemic in china and india and like i said this isn't just mexico or the united states this is everywhere because china and india are getting richer and more sedentary and it's becoming easier and easier to eat out and to buy soft drinks and to eat at restaurants and eat takeout uh let's see economy is more stable and mexicans are living longer so that's another thing too and then it talks about uh mexican exports blah 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 if you're not really interested in economics you can kind of skip most of this article that's why i read these articles so you don't have to here's another good photo the photos in these new york times articles by the way are so good i just i love them <laughs> uh, soft drinks are prohibited at this school but high calorie foods are also available there's some ready whip I have a bad relationship with Ready Whip. I remember drinking a whole can of Ready Whip one night. I'm not making that up. I, I should have put that in my uh, confessions video, which you can watch uh, in the archives. But it talks about the, the these large food chains, and a lot of them were bought by American companies. I remember when I was in Mexico, there are so many big grocery stores there. It's They're not called Walmarts. I forget what they're called, but they're kind of like Walmarts. They're massive. They have everything you'd want, and they're in super large quantities. It's really fun to go into grocery stores in other countries and just kind of compare what they have versus what we don't have here and to compare the prices. But Food is easily accessible in Mexico. And the thing about Mexico is that the food there is very cheap and it's very tasty. <laughs> you just get some, uh, go to one of those family restaurants they have, you know, where they have like the plastic seats and the Christmas lights hanging from the ceiling and you'll know what I mean. Uh, so they talk about the Ruiz brothers. One is 275 pounds. The other is 300 pounds, notably overweight. They say something really interesting here. Where is it? Um... Let's see. People are able to indulge in more processed food, but they are not rich enough to have an affluent lifestyle where they are able to be healthier. So they're kind of in this really bad spot where they have all this access, but they don't really have access to a good gym right? and they can't afford exercise equipment. And one thing we know about obesity is that it is directly correlated with your income. So the more you make, um, the I mean, like the richer you are, the less likely you are to be obese because you can go to gyms, you can hire personal trainers, you can eat organic, you can go to nice grocery stores. But if you have access to all this food, but you don't have access to all of those nice luxuries that we have here, then you you kind of have the worst of both worlds. Um, whereas you're really, if you're really poor and you can't afford enough to eat, then you starve. And that's not good either, but you're not obese. Uh, so they're kind of in this really bad spot. Here's a good picture of a typical Mexican grocery store. It's classic. By the way, all of these sodas that you see here are made with real sugar. Whereas in the United States, we use high fructose corn syrup. They use real sugar. And sometimes when I go to a bar and everybody's drinking and I don't drink alcohol, I order a Mexican Coke and they bring it in this um, glass bottle. It, it's like drinking a beer, but it has real sugar. It actually doesn't taste that much better, but and real sugar ne isn't necessarily cheap, uh, healthier for you. So here, this is classic. So here's a big Coke truck, and then there's this little shop on the corner of the street, and where they're selling a ton of soft drinks. Right? Uh, let's see. Blah 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 blah. Um, one another thing they said was, this was a quote from um, from somebody in the article. I forget who it was. It, he said, having fast food is like having the first world on your uncivilized ranch. It was beautiful. So in this country, United States, where I'm recording this, fast food is kind of seen as junky food. It's kind of despair. Everybody eats it, but everybody kind of pretends they don't eat it. But it's really cool to bash fast food because it's not very good quality. Um, it's really unhealthy. So it's really easy to blame fast food on the obesity epidemic. But in other countries like Mexico, 
and other, I wouldn't say third world, but other developing countries, fast food is seen as this like sign of progress. It's like they're a first world country now that they have fast food restaurants. And that's one of the reasons why it's taken off so well, because people actually see it as a symbol of wealth. It's just different perspective. I thought that was interesting. And then they all, the, um, the Ruiz brothers that they're talking about here, um, their mother says, they, they said being fat is seen as a sign of influence. No, no, no. She says, we are in a good financial position, so we could afford, we could offer our son's foods heavy in protein and also fast food. We'd say to one another, if they're a little fat, it means they're well fed. So in, in countries like Western Europe and the United States, um, being fat is seen as a sign of lack of self-control. It's like you're a lazy glutton, whereas in other countries it's seen as a sign of prosperity. And that's usually how it's been seen in most of history because most people have been poor and malnourished and so if you were fat it meant that you had enough food um and, and again this is just a different perspective if you go to other countries being fat is seen as good thing because you have enough food whereas in this country we see it as a lack of um discipline or lack of willpower or a uh, sign of poor character one thing too mexican women are less likely to have eating disorders because they have less pressure to meet some ideal there's not as much pressure in countries like Mexico to be thin. And that's why they have lower rates of bulimia and anorexia and binge eating. They just eat a lot. <laughs> uh, I love I love Mexico. It's a great country. Another picture. This is, yeah, this is very typical. I forget what this stuff was called, but this is like, there. it's like fried. I, I forget what it is. I really forget. And they put chili sauce and like lime on it. And there's this young boy. See, in countries like this, you start working young, right? Very typical. Very typical. It's just like it's cheap and it's tasty and it's just it's everywhere. Okay. Um, churros. If you've never had a churro, you are seriously missing out. Churros are so good. I just bought some cinnamon toast churros the other day. Those were interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, somewhere else in here he says... Um, Another point I want to make is that breaking habits and beating the brain is really hard. There's this one guy in here, he's overweight and he's eating a Sunday at McDonald's. And he says, I know this stuff is bad for me, but I can't stop. We're educated, but we're all hooked. Very interesting. So he knows better, um, but he just doesn't know how to stop, which tells, tells me that uh, overeating is really hard to stop sometimes because it feels so damn good in the moment. And it feels like you just have to do it. And when you have ice cream available, who can say no to that? So this is not just a problem here. This is a problem everywhere. And it's our brains are not well adapted for this kind of world. Our brains are adapted for scarcity. And they're adapted for a world where food is hard to get. But Mexico is a place where food is very easy to get. But for most of Mexico's history, it was hard to get. Uh, the only way to eat something tasty was to cook it yourself, and that usually takes a lot of work. Like tamales, tamales, man, those take a lot of work. I feel sorry for anybody who has to cook those. Um, I remember going into Mexico and buying 100 of them. No. How many did we buy? Yeah, it was about 120 of them for $30. It was super cheap. Super cheap. So that's that's pretty much the whole article. Uh, it talks a lot about free trade and some of these companies that are uh, American companies who are going down to Mexico and um, buying some of the Mexican companies. So here's some Mexicans here. They've got Pepsi, they have hot dogs, pizza, you know. Kind of looks like an American restaurant in a way. And then they have food trucks everywhere. They don't call them Lay's down there. They call them Sabritas or, so, or something like that. And then they have um, uh, trucks selling uh, cereals and cookies. It, it's just everywhere, man. It's just like epidemic down there. If you think the American landscape is unhealthy, just go down there. But if you go to Mexico, you're going to have a great time. You're going to have a really good time. And then some other... other uh, uh, there's another food truck here. Bimbo, that's a huge bakery down there. They make everything, anything and everything you'd want. So that's the end of the article. Uh, that I just thought it was interesting because obesity is a global epidemic. It's not just in the United States, so you can't just blame us. Uh, it's... It, it's just a natural phenomenon that goes with prosperity. So with prosperity comes lower rates of malnutrition, improved living standards, improved infrastructure, better education, um, more women's rights. I mean, a lot of good things, but 
obesity is one side effect. So we go forward 10 steps and then we go back 10 steps. So I hope you joined this article. I have some other articles about obesity in other countries that I'll review in future videos. So if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, subscribe button so you never miss a video because I'm releasing new content all the time. I hope you enjoyed this. See you next time.